let's talk about anterior thoracic wall. The anterior thoracic wall uh, muscles are made up of the myotomes from those thoracic region somites. And those myotomes become apaxial and hypaxial muscles. The apaxial muscles formed one of the seven layers, and we covered that the first week. So our focus is going to be on the six uh, muscle layers of the hypaxial group. And so let's go to there, and you see now those six layers from supracostal to ventral strap. We'll start with the first one, the supracostal. Supra for upon costal ribs. It's the most superficial of these four layers of the lateral wall. Then there's an external layer, an intermediate layer, an internal layer, then the subvertebral, sub means below the vertebrae, and then there's the ventral strap muscle along the front. And so therefore, in the hypaxial muscles, in any part of the trunk, whether the neck, thoracic, abdominal, pelvic perineal region, we can look at these different layers of hypaxial muscles. So if we then put that in the upper corner, put those in the upper corner, and let's focus on thoracic wall muscles now, where we take that pattern and add it to this picture. And so now we're going to show those six layers of muscles and name those muscles uh, in those layers in the thoracic wall. So first, let's take a look at some happy faces with regards to this cross-section through the thorax, where there's our thoracic vertebra, T for thoracic, and then we have our ribs in the picture, and then there's our sternum, your breastbone along the front with the clavicles articulating on either side, and then there's the scapula in yellow and the humerus in yellow. Um, the head of the humerus articulating to make your shoulder joint. All right, now there are all those muscles that are highlights. So again, we're going to take this pattern and apply it to this picture. The supracostal layer has the following two muscles, the serratus anterior that attaches from the ribs, one through eight, and to the medial margin of the scapula. Uh, then we also have the pectoralis minor. It comes from ribs three, four, and five and goes to the scapula, this coracoid process. So together, those two are in the supracostal plane. In addition, so supracostal means above the ribs. Now, the rhomboids and levator scapulae are in this same area. You can see the rhomboids in this picture, but not the levator scapulae, because it's more above. But all these muscles are in that supracostal plane. Next, we have our external intercostal muscle. That's the external layer. Then the internal intercostal muscle, the intermediate layer and the internal, or the innermost intercostal, that's the internal layer. But the innermost intercostal has a couple of other ones as well. There's subcostals and transversus thoracis muscles in that same plane that you're going to see in the cadaver lab. Now with regards to the subvertebral layer, in the thoracic region, much of that is not functional because we don't need it in humans, but you have that longest coli from the neck that comes down into the upper th thorax. Um, I don't care if you remember this one for this term or not. We'll cover that in the neck. And then the sternalis that you see in red at the very front, this is one that's a lacking muscle that you rarely find in humans, but when you see it, it's not a surprise because its pattern is there. Now, the pectoralis major, that's all I left in red, what is that all about? Well, it is an upper limb muscle that is migrated to the axial skeleton to anchor the upper limb to the thoracic wall. So you'll dissect that and see it in the cadaver lab, though its major functions will dissect the nerves that innervate it because we'll be in this area, that medial and lateral pectoral nerve, but the detail we'll cover in the upper limb. So let's do the thoracic muscles in an anterior view, shall we? So let's do this again. Well, the first muscle is our pectoralis major, that upper limb muscle that comes from the sternum and then goes over to the humerus. That's an upper limb muscle that migrated to the chest. Um, we'll cover that in more detail in the upper limb. We remove that and we now see the serratus anterior coming from ribs one through eight or nine to the medial margin. And there's our pectoralis minor muscle. That's in that supracostal plane. Next are our intercostals. So there's the external intercostal that we see at each of these intercostal spaces. And then we see the direction of the striations is from lateral to medial. Okay, as if you keep doing that external for sexternal, because you keep following that arrow, it'll take you right down to the sex organs. The internal intercostal is found in these spaces, and its striations course perpendicularly to the external intercostal. There are the um, intermediate layer. And then our inner, innermost intercostal and subcostal muscles are found the deepest in for these uh, intercostal muscles. 
Then the longest coli, it comes from the cervical vertebrae and down into the upper thoracic vertebrae. Again, I don't care if you know it for this unit or not. And then the sternalis, I don't even have a picture of it. We dissected one a couple of years ago in the lab. They're very, very rare, but there's these strap muscles that are continuous with your rectus abdominis, your six pack that come all the way up into the chest because it's that we no longer need to flex because our sternum, the three bones in our sternum are fused. We don't need to have them mobile anymore. And there's that sternalis muscle. It's more of just cool to see the pattern. So thoracic wall muscles now in a step dissection. Okay, And so here we have our serratus anterior, external intercostal, internal innermost intercostal, and so forth. Um, we're going to be focusing on just the first four. So there's our serratus anterior superficial to the ribs and then the next one in is the external intercostal and then the internal intercostal and then the innermost intercostal and then there is our intercostal vein intercostal artery both of which we'll talk about in more detail uh, next week when we do the mediastinum and then there's our intercostal nerve and the intercostal nerve is really the extension of the ventral ramus and it's providing cutaneous sensation to that dermatome at that segmental level, as well as motor innervation to those intercostal muscles. So there's our internal intercostal and our innermost intercostal, and the key is the vein, artery, and nerve course between those two. So a pattern that we'll always see is between the intermediate and internal layer of that body wall muscle group, you'll always find the neurovascular bundle. All right, let's talk about bones for a second. So thoracic vertebrae, ribs, and sternum make up the thoracic cage. So there's our thoracic vertebrae. There's 12 of them. Then they articulate with ribs. There's 12 pairs of ribs. And ribs are broken down into true ribs, the ones highlighted in this picture, where the ribs, in orange, articulate with the sternum via costal cartilage, which is yellow, directly. False ribs are when the, the bottom um, 8, 9, and 10 ribs, in orange, articulate with the sternum via costal cartilage, yellow, but it's all through the same element of costal cartilage, so the ribs indirectly attach to the sternum. We call them false ribs. That'll give them a complex. And then floating ribs, in orange, are the bottom two ribs articulating with T11 and T12, where the ribs do not articulate with the sternum via costal cartilage, hence floating ribs. The intercostal spaces are formed between one, vertebra uh, one rib it's the, the space between ribs. So you count intercostal spaces by the space below the rib. So that arrow is showing intercostal space one, and then there's a second rib, and there's intercostal space two, the third rib, intercostal space three, and so forth. Uh, the sternum, the breastbone, this is derived from that lateral plate mesoderm. It's comprised of the manubrium, sternal body, and xiphoid process. So there's the manubrium, and then there's the sternal body, your breastbone, and that xiphoid process is at a pointy end at the very bottom. And then the sternal angle is between the manubrium and sternal and uh, sternal body. That sternal angle is going to be an important radiographic and uh, clinical landmark as we talk about the mediastinum next week. And there's our thoracic wall.